Hey guys, it's Bill from Linden, Tennessee. So this is going to be a before and after video. I drained the coolant out of this thing because it I knew it was going to need some new stuff. I pulled the bottom radiator hose off and like nothing came out. There wasn't any coolant in the radiator at all. Then I pulled the thermostat out, which is also near the bottom radiator hose next to the water pump on the bottom of the block. And all of the water came out of the block. And uh, that, that's what it's supposed to do. But the problem was, is it was nasty and black. Um, the uh, catch can over here on the right, it was all nasty and black too. I cleaned it out, but it was pretty gross. Um, I, it's, there's oil, there's oil in it. Um, so <clears throat> with that in mind, and I know I've got low compression, um, and this thing sat for a long time. So I'm just going to go ahead and pull this head off and, ha and send it off and have it uh have the have it resurfaced and probably a valve job maybe some new valves new seats for sure new valve steels uh all that stuff so we'll just take care of that and that'll be the end of that and hopefully uh when i get when i can see the pistons and the top of the block all that will be okay um i need to get a straight edge i need to i need to put a straight edge on the top of the block to make sure it's not warped or anything but um but yeah, so that's what I'm going to do. So I wanted to do a before picture now. I don't know how long this is going to take. Theoretically, it shouldn't really take very long at all. I need to get the cam belt off. Got to get the, the air box off. The intake and the exhaust manifolds come off. Um, take the injector pipes off. I don't think I'm going to need to take the injector off. Uh, the injection pump off, but yeah, you know, cam belt. Uh, yeah, it should be pretty straightforward. Uh, I mean, worst case, as long as the block isn't warped, if you know the um or the cylinders aren't too scored up uh worst case is i could you know i can from the bottom uh i could disconnect the connecting rods and push the pistons out from the top and i can you know get a hone and just hone the cylinders out just to smooth them up or anything if need be and put new rings on and all that stuff possibly new pistons if it's needed i don't know what i'm gonna need but at any rate uh this is kind of part one We'll see you in a minute. Goodbye. All right, guys. Here's the update on the old Volkswagen. Got the cylinder head off. It, only, it didn't take very long. It's not a very hard thing to do. The uh, uh, I took it off with the intake and the exhaust manifolds on the head because those bolts are really, really hard to get to. Uh, in fact, I'm not. Ooh, I'm really not sure how you would get to them. Um, the intake is held on with some Allen head bolts and. Uh, yeah, to get, uh, whew, it's just really hard. It'd be really difficult to get to those. But, uh, so I took it off with everything sent you. I had to come in from the bottom and get the bolts out of the exhaust manifold. Uh, two of them came out. Four of them broke off. But they left enough stud sticking out of the exhaust manifold that I was able to use a couple methods to remove them. Here's a, a series of little videos to show you what I did there. Uh, so taking the cylinder head off of this Volkswagen took the exhaust manifold off and to get the uh, free it from the exhaust pipe the header pipe got to take the studs off on the exhaust flange there's six of them and I managed to get two out uh, just you know in the traditional way of putting a socket on the bolt and taking it out the other two were not so much uh, got stuck see like that one the stud just broke off inside the nut. So a cool way of uh, undoing stuff like this, if you've got some so the stud sticking out like that, uh, if it breaks off flush, you got a different thing. You got to kind of drill it and then drill it in the center, hopefully, and then get a, uh, a screw extractor, hopefully, or just keep drilling it out until you get to the um, the tap size of the hole, and then just try and retap the hole and try and save the existing threads. Uh, if you screw that up. Then you got to oversize the drill, or oversize the hole, then um, get you a, uh, uh, what do they call it? Um, it's thread inserts. Uh, blah. <clears throat> I can't remember what it's called. I'll make a note. Yeah, that. Get one of those and, uh, you know, do the inserts. Uh, helicoil. Helicoil. But if you do have some studs sticking out, what you can do is um, you get you a... a nut that's a little bit bigger than the bolt that you're trying to remove uh, you take your angle grinder or something file or whatever 
get around and like clean up all this rusted metal just to get down to solid metal. Clean the top up off, top off of the uh, the bolt there, the stud that's sticking out. Put you some kind of a washer on there. That's really not necessary, but um, then put your bolt that's a little bit too big, and you got a little dent. Got a little dent right there. Well, starting in the middle to make sure that you get good uh, good burn in on that stud. Just start welding. Just start there in the middle. Get it nice and uh, burnt in there, and then just come around and do a little circle so you end up with a situation like that. And then hopefully what you can do is you can uh, put your socket wrench down. There you go. You put your ratchet on there. And now bear in mind this sucker is stuck. This may not actually work. I hope it works. But just kind of apply some nice easy pressure and eventually maybe hopefully it'll either break or it's going to come loose. If it breaks then we're going to do another video and I'll show you what you got to do with that. This feels like it's going to break. This is going to break. All right, uh, stand by. All right, it didn't break. Uh, what I did was, off camera, uh, instead of just using one hand and pushing here, which kind of puts a side, which puts a side torque to the whole thing, take your other hand and you kind of pull back on this one and push on this one, and you, you just end up getting a, a more direct um, torque into the into the stud. But eventually, it has loosened up now, so it's it's coming undone now. So that is how that is. So that's pretty cool. That's a really cool way of doing that. And uh, so far, I got that one off. I got this one. And I got this one here. So, yep, that's what you do. Another way that you can do it, if you don't have this much stud showing through or whatever, um, is you can take a, uh, another bolt and just weld it to the top of the stud. I tried that first with this, but these little quarter inch bolts they just weren't enough they didn't have enough uh strength to, to pull these studs out they're stuck in there pretty good but um yeah so that's it and also i had these uh sitting with pb blast just any kind of any kind of um um stuff that you spray on there to to uh to break the the rust just had that sitting there for like you know several hours uh, inside here if you see you can't really see it but they're shiny inside there they're oily so that that um, that stuff got in there and, and loosened those threads up a little bit, but you do need a little bit of help. But anyway, just thought you'd like to see how that works. All right. Bye. Well, and just like that, I spoke too soon. So, uh, I did the same thing like I did with these other three. They came out perfectly fine, but as you can see that one, that one broke off just solid flush. So what I'll do is I'll clean this surface up a little bit and, um, I'll center punch that nut right, that, uh, stud right there. And, drill through, drill into it. Um, I don't have any easy outs. Um, so yeah, the hard part about that is just making sure you get right in the middle of it. Um, so what you do is you, you drill through there. Um, not, not quite as large as is needed to actually tap a new hole, but pretty close. And then once you've done that, uh, I'll, I'll spray some more of that, um, that penetrant oil uh, PB blast or whatever you use um, I'll spray some more of that let it sit for a while and then I'll just take a, a punch a hammer and a punch and I'll try and I'll try and knock that loose um, knock it off the threads because once you've drilled out the inside of it then whenever you whack on it um, it, it, it tends to deform uh, the core or not the core the anti-core <laughs> the opposite of the core um, of that stud and it'll usually come loose so we'll uh, play this out and see what happens all right. See you later. All right, guys. Well, the screw extraction uh, did not go well. Uh, could have gone worse, and I'll tell you how here in a minute. Um, so I, I first tried to drill the center out of it and then took a punch and tried to knock the the remaining pieces out. And that did not work. Something else that you can try that sometimes works is um, you get a Torx bit i had one i'm looking for it right now uh well i have a torx bit like uh that you take you know screws out with or whatever if you get a torx bit and then hammer it in there torx bits are typically pretty hard uh, harder than a bolt um and then sometimes that can work and screw it out but it did not so then like i said the next thing to do is um you gotta go with a helicoil so this is a helicoil kit 
This is a metric repair kit. This is ridiculous. I bought this kit about, shoot, 23 years, 22 or 23 years ago. I needed it to fix um, a bolt that had broken uh, when I was trying to change the alternator on a 90s Ford Ranger uh, when I was in Biloxi, Mississippi. <laughs> and so I had to buy this one kit to fix the threads on that particular situation. And it's just sat in my toolbox. Uh, I needed it one other time about 12 years ago or 10 years ago. And again, it's just sat in the toolbox. I've never needed it again, but here you go. That's what I needed. Now, when I went to, to drill this, I tried to get it in the center, but I didn't quite. You can kind of kind of see how it's not quite centered, but there's a lot of, uh, they, they over drilled the holes on the exhaust manifold. So there's a bit of clearance in there. So then this, that little dude, that's your that's your helical right there. It's just uh, you know just some threads, and then you got a little special tool, and then all you do is um, you just run it in here, and um, and that's it. You just run that sucker in there, and hopefully it goes all the way until there's no more thread of the helical showing. And um, I mean basically that's it. That's that's the end of it right there. And then I'll come in here and I'll whack the end with a a little punch or something just to get rid of the, the little divot that's on the bottom of there and that's it that's your that's your fixed threads and now um you know now he's got the old that's this is one of the old ones but it, you know it shows you that's the, that's the right thread now it's not a, yeah like i said it's not exactly in the middle but it's okay it's it's not off a lot so it'll be fine and you know that's it now if i was doing this right <laughs> if i'd have been thinking i'd have put some uh thread lock in there just to keep that from going but it's not it's not going to go anywhere i'm going to put a stud in here um, so unlike a screw, whenever you tighten a screw down, you're, you know, there's friction that happens when you're, whenever you're tightening the screw or bolt or whatever, there's friction against the threads. But when you have a stud in there, it's just solid. And all you're doing is pulling on those threads. So that's all I'll be doing with this. Now I'll be sure to try and remember where this is. Cause I don't want to put a huge amount of torque on this. This is strong. I mean, it's as, you know, it's as, it's almost as strong as a, as a normally tapped thread, but, um, just the same. I want to be kind of be kind of careful with it but anyway that's how that works so uh oh the other way they could have gone horribly wrong whenever i tapped the uh you gotta get a the right size it comes with it comes with a, the tap and uh whenever i tap that out this could have broken off in there if this would have broke off in there that would have sucked that would have sucked a lot we don't want to talk about that don't let that happen <laughs> all right thanks for watching yeah, so that's some ideas on how to remove bolts. And if you can't get them out, then you can uh, fix the threads. The cylinder walls don't look great at all. They don't look great at all. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and order a hone, order a cylinder hone of the right size. It, it's this funny looking thing. It uh, just looks like a big wire wheel with um, some, I guess they're carbon or something. Uh, little balls on the end of the little wires and you stick that on a drill right on a drill and you just kind of have the drill on low speed and you just kind of push it up and down push it up and down like a piston and kind of go at it until the cylinders clear up clean up and I hope they do because uh, that would suck if they don't then I need to uh, I'm gonna see if I can't borrow some snap gauges from work and a big micrometer so I can measure these cylinders to see if they're within spec and make sure that they're straight. It doesn't look like there's, there's usually like a, there can be a ridge right here. Uh, if the cylinder walls are really worn, there's a bump right here, but it's just carbon. That's just a carbon buildup. I think that'll come up with, come off with a hone. So that's okay. The top of the cylinder head looks okay. I kind of cleaned it up with some, uh, some of the green scrunchy things and some carburetor cleaner. Um, so that cleaned up pretty good the tops of the pistons this one in particular It's got these little it's got a little nub stuck right there and a little chunk taken out here The chunk taken out here is probably a nub right there. So who knows how that happened? I don't know if a, if the valve could have hit that or uh, I got nothing and I think the number one cylinder has a little divot in it also. So I'm gonna go ahead and um, After I measure the bores, I'll go ahead and order some cylinders Sorry some pistons get some new pistons new rings uh, that means I'm going to have to drop the oil pan, that way I can get to the bottom of the connecting rods and push the pistons up through the top here, uh, swap out the pistons. Hopefully the 
the connecting rod main bearings will be okay. I can just reuse them and the uh, the journals of the camshaft crankshaft will look okay too. I can just reuse all that stuff. I hope. Uh, if I can't, then we got bigger problems. <laughs> so let's just let's just hope that they work. Uh, I wanted to comment on how cute these little cylinders are. This is such a small engine. It's 1,500 cc's. You know, 1.5 liter. I don't know what that works out to in cubic inches, but not very many. Um, so it's just kind of cute. I went to uh, I went up on my sacrifice to the gods of speed and grabbed some pistons from other jobs that I've done. This is a little piston out of a, a RM125, little uh, Suzuki RM125 motocross bike. This is piston out of a CR500 motocross bike. That was a beast. And this is a piston out of a an XR650L Honda four-stroke uh, street bike, big dual-purpose bike. Um, that that piston right there actually went up around Norway and uh, drove all over Europe and England and yeah, yeah, that's I, that's pretty cool. Anyway, uh, yeah, I missed that motorcycle. Anywho, uh, what else? Well, cylinders over here. It's just it's just a mess. It it looks like it looks like maybe the um, the head wasn't torqued down properly because some of the head bolts weren't as tight as some of the other ones. And there's, it looks like some, um, there was, you know, blow by across this one, not on this one, maybe some on this one. I don't know, but it's kind of a mess. And I got to tell you, this was the stinkiest cylinder head that I have ever removed. And I've, you know, I mean, I'm not a engine master, but I've, I've rebuilt quite a few engines and this was the stinkiest one I've ever encountered. It was gross, but yeah, so that's, um, that's what we did where I'm at, and um, if the cylinders are within spec and the crank journals look okay, then I'll go ahead and box this thing up and send it off to a guy in West Missouri and uh, who has recommended to me no lens, no lens cylinder repair, or no lens head repair, or something like that, or no lens. I was strongly recommended uh, to use him, so that's what I'll do. Hmm. Okay, so that's where we're at, and uh, I'll post more updates as I update. So, thanks for watching. We'll see you next time.